My name is Ken Armstrong. I'm the president and CEO of North Arrow Minerals. We're a diamond-focused exploration company listed on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol NAR. The purpose of this short presentation is just to take you through some of the targets that we're going to be drilling in an upcoming program in March of 2018 on our Loki project in the Lac de Gras area of the Northwest Territories. The drill program hasn't happened yet, so I will be making some forward-looking statements, so please keep that in mind as you, as you listen along. As I mentioned, North Arrow is, is focused on diamonds. We actually have a number of projects throughout Canada. Our most advanced project is uh, at now yet up on the Melville Peninsula in Nunavut. We have bulk sample results, some diamond results coming from a mini bulk sample pending, and we'll be drilling on that project in 2018 as well. But also we'll be drilling on a number of discovery stage projects that we have, including Loki, that is the focus of this presentation, but they'll also be drilling on our LDG joint venture with Dominion Diamond, which is also located in the Lac de Gras area Area, and on our MEL project up on the Melville Peninsula in Nunavut, a brand new discovery that we made over the Labor Day weekend in 2017, so it'll be our first ever drilling program there on a new Kimberlite field that uh, also came back with some very promising initial diamond results based on a prospecting sample that, uh, that we collected. We also have diamond project in Saskatchewan at Piku that we continue to advance and another smaller project Lux in, in Nunavut. And we're always looking at other uh, exploration opportunities in the diamond space and we do have a legacy Brownfields Gold project up on the Hope Bay Belt, just north of the Doris gold mine that TMAC put in production last year. But the focus of this presentation is to talk about Loki, and we're going to be drilling at Loki in, in March of 2018, and I just wanted to, to take you through the targets we're going to test and, and go over a little bit of why we're doing this program. Loki, as I mentioned, is located in the Lac de Gras area of the NWT, just about 8,600 hectares of mineral claims. There are five known kimberlites on the property. We're going to be drilling one of them called EG05, but the main focus of the program is going to be to test some undrilled targets and try and make a new discovery. And that also is going to be the goal of drilling at our Lac de Gras joint venture property with Dominion Diamond. We're not going to go through the, the targets and background on that project, but it is a very large area just south of the Diavik Diamond Mine. Um, and both projects are also uh, south of the Acadie mines. And when we talk about the Lac de Gras region in the Northwest Territories, we often use the word uh, world-class diamond deposits. These are, are two very high value diamond mines. Both of them have been in production since the early, uh, the late 1990s, uh, early 2000, I think in the case of, of Diavik and combined it produced over 20 billion dollars worth of diamonds from these deposits so this is exploration that we're doing at loki and also at ldg this is brownfields exploration the shadow of a head frame type of exploration um, and clearly a very good place to be looking to make new discoveries uh, and the discoveries we do make have a, have a very good chance of being diamondiferous but the main purpose of this presentation is to take you through some of the targets that we're going to be drilling in, in March of this year. The targets that we'll be testing are the green ovals that you see on this map. It's a little bit busy, but the ovals all sit within uh, the Loki mineral claims um, and cover targets in some cases that are associated with the Monument Kimberlite Cluster, which is the, the yellow triangles in the center part of the property here. The Monument Kimberlites have a really well-defined indicator train that come off them, and those are the red circles that you see. The red circles are till sample results, and in particular looking at the pyro garnets and till samples. The bigger the circle, the more of these pyro garnets we see, and we focus in on those, of course, because they are derived from the Earth's mantle, they've been brought up, eroded out of the kimberlite, and they're a lot more numerous within the kimberlites than the diamonds are themselves. In the southwest part of this map, you can see that there's another area of these red circles. This is an unexplained indicator train uh, where we have identified pyro garnets and till samples, and we have some targets in the green oval down there that we're going to test as well. But the first part of the program is actually going to drill one of the known kimberlites on the property called EG05. It sits along a trend of kimberlites that run right along the southern shore of Lac de Gras. And then we have another target that we call 912, just to the southeast of that, that we're going to test. But EG05 itself is really, it's really pretty interesting. It was discovered in, in 1999. Um, it's been tested by three drill holes. All of those holes collared in the kimberlite and ended in the kimberlite, so it's really unconstrained. The main target that was tested was a fairly small magnetic high, coincident with an electromagnetic or a conductive response. And what's interesting to us is that easternmost of the holes that hit the kimberlite was a vertical hole collared in kimberlite, ended in kimberlite at 206 meters. And, and it's immediately adjacent to the, a very striking magnetic low, and it's not far away from that magnetic low at all. 
And that is an area that we want to test with this drilling because if that magnetic low represents an expansion of the EGO5 kimberlite or an untested phase of the kimberlite, then it really is going to be quite large. And the, the portion that was tested uh, was diamondiferous. There were reported to be 28 microdiamonds that came from just under 130 kilos. That was at a time when microdiamond reporting didn't break diamonds down into various sizes. But one of the things that we have been able to sort out is that those diamond results were actually kind of chunky. They aren't evenly spread through those 130 kilos, but that more of the diamonds came from, from smaller intervals, which gives us an idea that there might be some uh, higher grade phases or units within the kimberlite. And we want to get a better handle on that. So we'll also be drilling the initial conductive response that uh, that was tested in 1999. Another target that we're going to test just to the southeast of EGO5 we've called 912 and it's another interesting one. It's immediately a long trend um, from those known kimberlites uh, that run along the, the southern shore of Lac de Gras. This is an image of the resistivity data that we collected last year. You can see there's a nice very prominent resistivity response over EGO5. There's another response over the EGO1 kimberlite on the eastern side of the property. And then 912 um, sitting right along to the east of EGO5 is also a very prominent response in its own right. It's kind of funny though having those two different components to it. And I think that can be partially explained by looking at the profile data. And this is I think an informative slide. And what we're seeing here is on, on the left hand side or in the center part of the slide, there's five panels of magnetic and electromagnetic profiles over known kimberlites in this area area of Lac de Gras. In fact, all five of these are the profiles over the, the five kimberlites that are on the uh, Loki property. The profile on the left-hand side is actually EGO5, and you can see it has this weak magnetic high response with an electromagnetic uh, response as well that's quite prominent. The other kimberlites are all magnetic lows, uh, including the one on the, the far right-hand side, which is adjacent to a diabase dike, so that's where you can see the magnetic profile uh, moving upwards. But of those kimberlites, some have absolutely no electromagnetic response at all. Um, the one in the center has a strong EM response, not too dissimilar to EGO5. And then the one on the right-hand side has this sort of double peak EM response. And that double peak EM response is really similar to what we see at target 912. Um, it's just in this case, 912 is coincident with a relatively weak magnetic high next to a diabase dike. So it has all of the ingredients that we see in the known kimberlites on the property, and we're certainly really looking forward to drill testing this. It straddles the shore, the southern shore of Lac de Gras, it's so relatively easy to get at, and it needs to be tested, and it'll be one of the first targets that we test during this program. Another target that, uh, that we're really looking forward to getting tested here is 465, and it sits just south of the main monument kimberlite cluster. Um, the monument kimberlites are significantly diamond bearing. This is a, a target that's on the Loki property, just south of the property boundary with the monument kimberlites, and it's a coincident electromagnetic magnetic anomaly. It's these first two uh, panels that you see on this slide now, and then the bottom panel is our ground geophysical data. It's a very prominent, isolated, circular target that needs to get drill tested and, uh, and is on our, our list for testing in March as well. I talked a bit about this train of pyrope garnets in the southern part of Loki. Again, we've got a couple of areas that we want to drill test and some targets that we've identified. And the first of those is target 853. We really like it because it's very well situated with respect to the indicator mineral train and also because it's a disruptive geophysical feature to what's happening with the main magnetic trends as they relate to the underlying geology, which is a bit of a mouthful, I guess. But, but really what we see here is that the underlying metasedimentary rocks have sort of a northwest southeast trend to them and this target 853 is perpendicular to that it clearly disrupts that trend and, and when we think about kimberlites intruding into their crust they are intruding into whatever that country rock happens to be and can be disruptive to uh, lithological trends and we think that's what we see with this target it's not a classic circular kimberlite type target but it's disruptive and it's real and uh, and will be on our list for drilling as well and then we have some more classic circular magnetic features a little bit further to the southeast that we'll be looking to drill test as part of the program. So that, that's it. I mean, it's a number of targets that uh, we, we've done a lot of the groundwork on the project now, and we have some targets that's, that need to get drill tested. And the purpose of this drilling program is to make new discoveries. We look to be mobilizing up to camp the last week of February. We're going to do a little bit of geophysics to finalize the location of, and where to call our the drill holes. And the drill should arrive that first week in March, and we should be drilling by the 8th or 9th of March or so, and plan on drilling for about three weeks. And look forward to reporting the results that come from that program, because it's the first of a few drill 
drill programs that we're going to have. I touched on that earlier in, in the presentation. There'll also be the joint venture drilling program on the Lac de Gras joint venture immediately adjacent to Loki. And then looking forward to getting back up to now yet our principal project and continuing with our delineation drilling of the Q1 to 4 Kimberlite there. And then in June to be drilling on the Mel project, our brand new discovery, new Kimberlite field. Uh, up on the Melville Peninsula. There'll be uh, drilling work there as well. So a lot coming, a lot of news flow from North Arrow. I think it's fair to say that North Arrow has been one of the few active diamond exploration companies over the last few years. We've had great success making new kimberlite discoveries at Mel and also at Piku of new kimberlite fields. And with the drilling at Loki, we really are looking forward to making some new kimberlite discoveries in the Lac de Gras region as well. So look forward to keeping you informed of the results of the program and please stay tuned. Thanks very much for listening. <laughs>